<laughs> Hope it goes light. Hello. Us. Us. Welcome, everyone. Today I've got uh, Ben with me. Some of you know Ben. He's been with me before. He's been training with me for uh, the better part of 20 years. And he's going to join in today and uh, help us along with some uh, fundamentals. What we're going to do is just review, recap uh, how to use um, certain equipment and why you use it and why it's really important that you use it correctly, okay, because uh, a, lot of the, a lot of equipment used correctly can really, really help your Kyogoshin training, and so we want to get into that. Torbjörn, nice to see you, my good friend, all the way from uh, Norway, Rochelle from Canada, Frederick from Sweden. Harry from about 50 metres down the road. <laughs> Raj Kumar from uh, Nepal. Thanks, everyone. So if you haven't met Ben, Ben Ajamian, us, us. Ben's, uh, he, he does all the things that I can't do anymore, and he's going to be helping me. And we've got some good news. We've been planning today. Us, Mike, Mike Clark from uh, Western Australia, the author of that great book, Shingitai, and Daniel, all the way from northern Sydney, Rob De Souza from uh, Tassie. Good to see you guys. Uh, look, Ben and I have been working very hard on a new project and we're, we're about to start a new online, I call it the uh, Budo Daigaku. Daigaku, Budo Daigaku. I'll write that for you. Anyone who knows Japanese will know what Daigaku means. The Budo Daigaku is the Ost Damien. Rod, good to see you. Paul Knip. Uh, good Morgen, mein Freund. It's very early in Germany, I'm sure. Uh, but Budo Daigaku is the Budo University. And we're going online. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover everything that we can think of. For me, it's like a bit of an, um, a life collection of everything that I've been working on. So we're going to cover everything in Kyokushin from how to stand in yoi, how to tie a belt, how to fold a gi, all the way up to third and fourth dan and fifth dan techniques. Uh, the bunkai will will break down all the kata. The bunkai uh, will will go cover all five ranges, all the aspects of Kyogoshin, um, basics, moving basics, uh, kata, uh, kumite, everything. We're going to cover all that. Oh, Shah, Shah Yusef, good to see you, man. Thanks for coming along. Uh, and uh, then we'll go into the ranges within. So as you know, we always talk about it. Kyokushin tournaments cover range five and four and a little bit of three uh, because simply you bump into each other. But we need to take it into three, the headbutt elbow, into four, the stand-up grapple, and into five, the groundwork. We're going to do all that. Uh, and uh, I, we really believe that we've got a comprehensive uh, amount of uh, uh, work, uh, of content to work with. Us, Ken, Us Kenneth from Melbourne, good to see you. Shalom. Thanks for coming, man. That shalom was probably for you, seeing, oh, seeing your Middle Eastern. My, my big nose. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's, that's a really exciting project, uh, and we're very, we're very keen to get that going. Uh, first of all, shout out to all my Patreon family members. Thank you again, as always. It's what you're doing that allows me to continue this. So if you're not a Patreon member and you think you're getting value for money, spread the love. Put it in there. Now, when we start up the uh, membership web website, I'll be dealing very closely with my Patreon family so you guys get it well. Us, LD, the triceps are back. Yes, his triceps. <laughs> <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> That's my triceps. Sean it's... has a, a unicep. Yeah, I've got arms. a monocep. <laughs> see this? Look, I don't have a bicep. I have a monocep. I've lost the long head. I don't know if you can see it. I only have one bicep muscle. Actually tore it hitting me. The long head was actually destroyed doing a little bit of grappling. It was just hanging on. And then one day I threw a rip at, at Ben and he blocked it. And, um, well, you know the story anyway, Lawson. And he <laughs> blocked it and uh, my bicep just ripped off. Um, You've got to be careful with the grappling. It's a beautiful thing. But if you don't tap, the, the reason I tore my shoulder was I couldn't tap. I rolled over. I was in a bundle. My hands were tied up. My feet were tied up. And, and he couldn't hear me. So he just kept going until I pour, tore a bunch of muscles off my shoulders. 
<laughs> yeah, right, will help us get our muscles back. We've got our muscles. They're just not as big as they used to be. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, a little bit of a warm-up, a deck of cards, quarter only. So I'm going to shuffle them up. I'm getting better. I'm getting I'm, – I'm, I'm re – Discovering how to shuffle cards. Going back to his card card counting days. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Going back <laughs> to the old days where. Okay. Now I'm going to count them off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Beautiful. So I'm going to take those and we'll do a, a quarter of a deck. I've taken the jokers out so that doesn't interrupt us. We'll have a warm-up, that, and then I'm going to go straight into how we want to use the mitts. Now, before we do, I want to point out something to you. I have this belt on. See this? I always wear that belt so that the partner can hit in the body. But, of course, it's a backup. It's not the main thing. The other thing I want to point out is uh, these gloves. These are cotton gloves, all right? Now, as you know, boxers wrap their hands and so on. I don't use them. One, because they tend to get smelly and dirty. They hang around gyms. Two, they take a while to put on. And uh, three, I tend to believe that they, because they wrap your hands strongly, I know that the objective is to reduce injury. The best way to reduce injury is make your hands strong. Okay? So never depend on training equipment to make your hands strong. You spar with shin guards not to protect you but to protect your partner. And you spar with shin guards to protect injury that has already occurred. But otherwise, if you depend in, and these days you see some of those shin guards that are almost leather colored, covered, hard, hard shell. And they're great for when you are a couple of weeks away from a tournament. But if you use them on a regular basis, you never develop correct technique because you depend on them and you don't know when you've thrown a technique that will injure you. Okay, so what we do is we always have these. Every student has them. No student in the dojo is allowed to use equipment without wearing these pads. Now, what happens is when you use them, it protects the leather, it protects everything. I mean, I've been using these for so long, and you know, they can often they'll start to stink, and these absolutely have no, uh, no bad odor at all because these are what absorbs the sweat, and you take them off. And you wash them. So it's always important that you, you protect your equipment. If you don't, if, in the dojo, if you don't have these, you can't participate in the, in, the, uh, in the equipment. So I just put these on. They're really good if you want to wear them underneath your gloves. They don't, you don't depend on the wraps and so on. They absorb the sweat, keep everything nice and clean. That's... So we're going to have a warm-up, do one quarter of the deck, and... Then we'll get going straight away into the mitts. Before we go into the mitts, I will just talk a little bit about what's important. So you'll need a pen and paper. If you intend to use mitts or if you use mitts and you want to get a little bit of uh, viewpoint of how what I think is important, I've got 11 or 12 points that I think are really, really vital for you. Of course, Alan, good to see you, man. Thanks for coming. Okay, so I'll take the deck of cards down. And we'll get going. Oops. 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 Let me just adjust that camera. There. Beautiful. Oops. Okay, knees. Oops. Knee. Sun. She. Hata. Oops. Knee. Sun. She. Squatting. Itch, me, son, she. I do this warm up each time because I know there are some people who just aren't doing enough exercise every day and they come online and it's their lifeline to doing a little bit of exercise. So that's why I go ahead and do it, even if it's just a chat. Yeah, okay, hips around. Oh, me, son, she. The older you get, the more important it is to do a little bit every day. Oh, she. <laughs> Son, she. I got to tell you, now that I'm in my 60s, I look back and you see all these sites about paleo diet and how to get fit and let me help you chisel your body. And it's just interesting that all those guys are all in their 30s and 40s. 
okay? And out of all of them, I guarantee when we get to the 60s, it's a different story. So you have to manage your own life. And, and the older you get, the more important it is to do a little bit more carefully every day. Double oh, shoulder width. Oh. Right hand and twist. It's the tongue, he, go, go, hitch, touch, chew, and do down the middle. It's oh. the tongue, he, he, tongue, he, he, tongue, pull the right. It's the oh. tongue. And the left. Oh. Middle. Good. Three count. Oh. Turn the right leg. Find your balance, find your shape, open up. Let gravity do the work for you. Don't resist gravity. Let gravity do it all. Oof. By that I mean you take a breath and you sink your weight underside. You let your gravity take your body down. Turn your knee. Hip flexor. Push it forward. And here, push up. Oof. You get that nice stretch through the, through the hip flexor. I don't know if anybody's in there. No. Yes, yeah, so it's a bend. The way Ben's doing it is good if your knees are strong and you're young. You should try and keep your knees off the ground. I put mine down because I look uh, older knees. And stress the back arm up to remember it's the hip flex you're working here. And time. Find your balance once again, all the way around, toes in the air. For those who haven't met Ben, he's the chief instructor at my dojo. He's been training with me for 18 or 19 years. And uh, and uh, he's been a huge help, um, especially teaching when there are things that I can no longer do as well as I used to do. Okay, and even though Ben can't do them as well as I used to do, he's not too bad. <laughs> no, no, he's great. He's, he's, a, he's a great student. Nice, relax. Remember, that's when you feel you breathe, and then you go underside. You let your weight go underside. One of the ways to do that, and this is a little bit of a what the Japanese would call a gokui, you know, a, a hidden technique, is when you breathe, you settle your mind and breath at the lower point in the abdomen, the hara, the tanden. So you breathe in. Now you settle at the tanden. And you'll find your whole body weight will sink low. Yes. Knee. Push forward. See, Ben's knee is off the ground. If you can do that, that's good. Arm up. Push the hip forward. And sun. Once again, settle your breath and your mind at the tongue down. Nice. Shikogumi. Okay, yes. let's go. Shikodachi, left shoulder in. It's ni san shi hantai. It's ni san shi middle. Nice and deep. It's ni san shi land. Shikogumi, left leg first. It's Sun. Sheep. Go. Go. Nice and deep. Leg straight again. Pull the right again. And left. And middle. Oh. Popular today. I get one phone call a day and it comes right in the middle of the session. 
Good. Coming up, shake it off. Us. Forward, bitch. Me, some hunter, us. Bitch. Me, some shoulders, bitch. Us. Me, some yoy. Us. Remember, yoy, I don't want you to be slack about yoy. Fudo the arch is relaxed. That's a little bit like a standard ease for, I'm just going to check the messages. Who we got? Rod, Alan, good on you, yep. So Fudo the arch is the general relaxed stance. When you say yoy, different game now. The mind switches on. The yoy should be the trigger. Okay, if you've ever been in a street situation or working doors, you always have your triggers. Well, in training, the word yoy is your trigger. That's where you go bang, you switch on, your toes bite in, your knees bend a little bit, everything, your, your hara gets strong, and you take your posture. So yoy. Migi, sanchin dachi. Yoy. Okay. Hop. Wash you get. Oh, set. Large circle. Knee. Sun to the left. Cheap. Rook to the left behind. Rook. Pitch down. Touch. Just do a couple more. Coop to the front. You. I did that because from the side, when we talk about the um, the tensho kata, and you've got to get this feeling through the spine, and you feel that rotation through the spine, that allows you to use the body. And I was just talking to Ben earlier. A lot of these techniques which we do are really good for tournaments. But in the street, salsa is more into... Uh, Maashi yuke, koken, koken, knife hand, and back fist, and all these sort of things. And if you analyze it, they come out of tensho. Bang, bang. See that? One, two, three. Look. Crack, 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 bang. And that's straight out of tensho. Well, when you do these movements, it's not just a matter of getting the circular motion around the spine. It's also the expansion and tension of the spine, oh. and that that comes from doing the tension, the tensho and sunshin correctly. So it means you've got this feeling, this movement going on here. So when you do the mashi you care, but I don't know if you can see my back, but I want you to feel from here, pull your back, your, your shoulder blades together, and you roll forward again. One, two, shoulder blades come together, and then you push out again. Okay, now the more you do this, the more connection you start to see to what are considered to be certain styles of, of Chinese or original martial arts. And note Good. Just me. Arms. And arms. Neck forward and back. Side. And looking. And we're going to go straight into the deck of cards. You want this board? Now you're going to do the deck of cards. Remember, uh, we want to make sure that when you stand up, don't use your hands. Oh. I've given these a good shuffle, but uh, who knows? Could be horrible, could be a piece of cake. All right, first one. <laughs> <laughs> Eight of hearts. Oh. Eight burpees. Ready? Let's oh. go, bitch. Easy for you. Hey. Sun. Check. Go. See, Ben jumps. Rock, that's what you should be doing when you're younger. Catch. Hard. Peace. Next one. Ho oh. ho. Four. Hearts. Oh, it. Knee. Sun. Chi. So. 
Next one. Ten diamonds. Close. Ten sit-ups. Switch. B. Sun. Chi. Go. Look. Switch. Watch. Go. Yo. Sitting up. See what Ben did? Pendulum. Hip push. Tuck. Jack. Heart. Us. Oh, yeah. Us. 11 burpees. Wait. Let's go, itch. That's 23. Get out of the first four cards. Sun. She. Go. Look. Pitch. Touch. Jump. Jump. Pitch. Push. Oh, push. Okay, Eleven bit. Queen of diamonds. Push. Twelve sit ups. Push. Ben takes the count. Push. Push. Eight. Four. Two, four, hook, hitch, hook, two, two, hitch, knee. Let's move forward. Queen, clubs, us. Okay, so from here, pendulum, tuck the foot, push the hips. Remember when I talk about pendulum, it's not just pendulum this way. Sometimes you can't do that. If I was on the ground and Ben was trying to bash me and I keep my feet between him and then I want to get up as he moves away, I bend on my leg. And by doing that, you'll sometimes catch on my leg. Yes. So I'm here, I go up and I'll try to pendulum. It's no good. Yes. Okay, so what I need to do is, as he moves away, I kick that way. Yes. I still get the pendulum effect. Now I've got to watch out, so I create the wall. Oh. Okay? If he came in like that, even from this position, there's things I can do. Take him down. Watch you by surprise then. Then I pendulum up. Yeah, he pendulums up. <laughs> so I'm in here. Oh. And I can go backwards or forwards. Now <laughs> right, let's keep going. Are you? Seven of hearts. Oh. That's 30. Easy, guys. Oh. Easy for you. Hey. Sun, she, go, itch, beautiful, next one, ace, diamonds, a lot of uh, burpees and sit-ups today, okay, ace diamonds, 10 sit-ups, oh, itch, me, Sun, Chi, Go, Go, Page, Hush, Ko, Jo, Two Hearts, oh. Two Burpees, I shot, Page, Fish. That felt easy after all those other ones. Seven spades. Us. Seven push ups. Push up. Ditch. He. Sun. Chi. Go. Go. Here. Shock. Ten spades. Ten more push ups. Us. Ready? Ditch. Ditch. Hum. He. Go. Go. Ditch. Hut. Kill. So, do. Next one. Whoa, more hearts. Us. Geez, this deck is really. Someone loaded this deck. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> shuffling them up. That's what happens. That's Us. why you shuffle them. You don't know what's coming. Us. Yeah, five burpees. It's. Us. Hey. Sun. Hey. Go. Push. And lucky last. Eight. Squats. Clubs. Oh. <laughs> so eight squats. Oh. Ready? Pitch. 
3, 3, 3, 2, 1, 5, 8, beautiful, us. And grab a drink, come back, and we'll talk about mitts for a little bit, then we'll get going with the mitts. Us. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of hearts in that Woo. quarter then. Sometimes I do a quarter to be one heart. Yeah. Ben says he's got the heart racing. He's not even tired. Got the heart racing for me. Was Rod, good to see you, man. Yoku, stay with us at that. Mike Lorden, good to see you all the way from Florida and America. Rod, that deck was planned. Well, no, I actually shuffled them up. If it was planned, there wouldn't have been a single uh, heart in it, I can tell you. <laughs> yes, um, Ben's oh, very trusted. You. And, uh, and uh, we've been working together very closely for a long time, I have to say. Ben's probably been working with me even longer than some of my more famous students like Wally Schnaubelt and, and Gary O'Neill. Gary trained with me for nine or ten years, maybe 11 years. Yeah, that was, that was a horrible deck show. I agree with you. <laughs> but, guys, you must know me by now. If I wanted to stack a deck, there wouldn't have been any hearts or maybe a two of hearts or something like that. That one was just stupid. Oh. How many? 12, 23, 30. 32 plus 37. So, you know, the average for a quarter of a deck is 25. <sighs> but it was great, wasn't it? Oh, it was. Okay, they're the sort of things that uh, you really enjoy in the long run. Okay, so mitts. We're going to look at mitts first. The mitts are not designed to whack hard. If you want to whack things hard, you get a makiwara or a heavy, excuse me, heavy punch bag. The mitts are designed to primarily develop a bunch of things um, such as balance, rhythm, relaxation in the shoulders, accuracy. A lot of these days, the mitts were big in the old days. Now the mitts these days are often as small as the hand, okay? Uh, my, my mitts that I've been using are fairly average size, but even they are a little smaller than average, okay? You work your timing. It's just a rhythm thing. It's great to do the mitts to music or it's great to do them to a, uh, a metronome, okay? And the music and metronome are the same thing, really. It's just you find the music with the right beat and away you go. And that way you get away from the idea that you're trying to hit them too hard. Close. You just want to boom, 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 boom. Okay, we work that rhythm. Now, when we start working the mitts, you'll see that we have – you'll see that uh, what we have is the number system. And it's, it's pretty funny. Um, I actually learned this number system uh, years ago when one of my students, Tyrone Tongia, Tyrone Cyclone Tongia, you should look him up. He went from being an Uchi Deshi to being a professional boxer. And uh, I had the privilege of, oops, spelt his first name wrong. And a shout out to Tyrone's brother Ryan, just had their oh, first baby. Yeah, yeah, the little baby the other day. Little girl. I know they're going to name him Cameron. <laughs> After Cameron Diaz, of course. Of course. <laughs> okay, so um, when I was training Tyrone as a pro boxer, uh, he basically taught me the numbers, okay? So essentially, even numbers are right hand, odd numbers are left hand. So we work off that principle. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my long-suffering body belt on. As Ben gloves up. Now to start with, I, I won't, I won't, oh, don't right, put the gloves on. <laughs> gloves are a, uh, like I was saying before, they're a, um, a love-hate sort of thing. But um, it's always good to start off with nothing but bare hands or even just these little cotton gloves on because what that'll do is, you want to put them on? No? No, it's okay. My yeah. gloves are fine. Okay. Um, I because my own gloves. The, the, the big boxing gloves can give you a false sense of reality. Mm. You know, they feel, they make it feel like you're doing everything correct and you take the, um, 
you take the uh, gloves off mm. and all of a sudden you're hitting at strange angles and so on. Oops. Remember too, you know, we know this as a karate person. You, you make the fist and it's these first two knuckles that you hit with. So when you make that fist, you have to grip the fist in a way, and obviously you get used to it over time, that those two knuckles are in alignment with your radius bone and to a point down the middle between the radius and the ulna. Okay. Now, here's a beautiful little one of Solsai's um, secrets, if you like, which he, you know, he shared a lot of stuff with a lot of people. You, you make the fist by starting with the little finger, closing with the thumb. The point of impact is the first two knuckles, but the focus of the body weight, huh, tricky one, the focus of the body weight in the hand is behind the ring finger. Okay, now it takes a lot of thought and time and energy, especially on the makiwara, before you get a feel of that. But if you work the makiwara next time you do it, even though you hit with the seiken, the first two knuckles, try to start to relax and feel the hand concentrating behind the ring finger. Oh. Now, what it does is it coordinates the power from the legs through the hara, through the tandan, and it really helps to relax the shoulder. Because if I concentrate on my first two knuckles in my head too much, it tends to roll the shoulder over. And this is half the problem that we have in Kyokushin. Everyone is stiff. No one has shoulder relaxation. So what you do is even though you're aiming with the first two knuckles, I should take my hands off, my glove off, I guess. You can take Just screw my hands off. Okay. <laughs> even though we hit with the first two knuckles, my body weight is focused here oh, behind the ring finger. That's very profound. That's, um, and it takes a lot of experience for a master like Solsai to – Feel the difference between the point of impact and the focus of the body weight. The more you focus your body weight here, the more it'll help you to relax your shoulders and everything like that. So experiment with that. See how it feels. Let me know. Because I know that when I started doing makiwara and uh, used that, it made a world of difference. Okay, okay so I'm going to put the mitts on now, and we're going to have a little bit of a whack. But before I do, Ben's going to start doing a little bit of shadow sparring just to start to get his rhythm in place. Okay, a little bit of shadow sparring will warm you up and it'll get your rhythm going. Plus, it'll, it'll remind you to keep the back foot off the ground, keep the knees bent at all times. Is the back foot always off the ground? No, but one of the heels is always off the ground. Okay, so when you throw the left hook, you watch when he throws the left hook, sometimes the front heel will come off the ground. Sometimes it won't. Okay, so let's look now. First of all, we're going to look at the number system. Okay, and this is really, really valuable to uh, understand, all right? So remember that odd numbers are on the left. So we've got the one, was one. Now notice how I hold the mitts. I stand, stand sideways to him. A lot of people stand facing and hold the mitts like this. So he has to cross over. And for a beginner on the mitts, what will happen is one, you'll hurt your shoulder, especially when they hit hard, and two, the hands will start to drift apart, so you can see from the front now, starts here. And as he hits, my hands go wider and wider, and he's got to keep pulling the gloves together, going, dude, get your head together. Okay? I don't like that, and I've spent years trying to work out how to avoid it with students, and the easiest way is turn sideways, present one glove. So now he goes one. See that? Left hand one. One. Now he goes one, two. So that's a left, right. One, two, into the same glove. Not one, two, because one, to do that, I have. if I want to have it at my the same distance as my face, I literally have to hold them back here, which your shoulders will last about a month. Oh. Okay? By bringing it around to here, now it's in line with my head. You see that? So now the distance for him 
is as it would be in a real fight. Okay, so one, one, two. Now the left just comes up with the three at 90 degrees. One, two, three. Now the three, it's important to have the elbow horizontal. He does it again, watch. Bang, see the elbow is horizontal, not a little bit down. Not even a little bit more down, nothing like that. You're changing the technique from a three to a five. In other words, from a three hook to a five, okay? The elbow, if there's one thing that you need to work on when you're working a hook, it's make sure that that elbow is horizontal, of course, okay? Now, for beginners, we always teach, watch Ben's foot, roll your pants up. Don't tease my hairy ankles. See, even when they've got legs as short as Ben's, you can find a pair of deep pants that are longer. <laughs> okay, so, three, see that? Arm is horizontal, foot comes off the ground again. Three, okay, one, two, three. Bump, 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 again, bump, bump, bump. Okay, now, you work to get the foot off the ground because you're trying to educate your body to get the new, to get the body firing, to get the whole body turning. The punch is not the punch. The body is the punch. Awesome. And when you throw the hook, essentially your arm doesn't move awesome. in relation to your body. Awesome. It stays there and the body turns. You see that? It's not the arm. Right? And when you're good, every rule is made to be breaking, broken. When you're good, you can do anything you want with the left hook. If you remember Stan, the man on the knees, who's a world kickboxing champion, I refereed a lot of his fights, including four of his world title fights, and I couldn't tell you the number of times I've seen him knock guys out mm. with the leaping left, Oops. looping, leaping left hook, okay, because he had mastered the left hook. Oops. Okay, so distance is right. One, two. One, two. One, two, three, two. Okay, that's a simple combination. Now watch what he does. After the one, two, three, two, he changes angles. One, two, three, two, rotates off. And then I use a tendon reflex. Remember when we were doing that NK Gyakski? Gyakski, Mawashi Yuke. Gyakski, we're coming backwards and forwards and using that tendon reflex. Okay, I did that session with uh, Darren Stringer and Wes uh, Jansen the other night too. And that was all about boom, using that tendon reflex. Okay, so it's... Relax. Everything's relaxed. One, two, three, two. Ba, 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 ba. Hear that rhythm? Again. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, now he starts to move off the angle. So I follow him. If I'm holding mitts, he's constantly changing angles. If he does it there and stays in my dead zone, one, two, three, two, I just go boom, 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 and do what I want. Okay? And what I'll do is if they start to do the one, two, three, two, I'll just pop them on the forehead with the hand. Awesome. Okay, you can do that anyway to make sure they're moving the head, okay, constantly like this, boom, and move out of the angles, of course, okay? So, one, two, three, two, and he rotates out, boom, back with the two again. Again, up, 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 up. Now, I normally stay here, okay, but we're, we're trying to keep the, the, uh, the camera in mind. So, again, one, two, three, two, up, 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 up. He rotates, boom, moves off the angle, constantly move. Okay, so now what we're going to do is one, two, I'm going to sit, he's going to go nine. So that's a nine. Okay, so a one, a three, a five, a uh, five, right. a seven, straight body shot, and a nine. They're all the left hands. A two, a four, a six, an eight. He's trying to hurt me now. And a 10 is the body kagi ski. Okay, so they're the 10. We don't always use them all. We use the ones, the 80, 20, the ones that really count. Okay, so let's just play a little bit now. The objective is not for him to hit hard with power, but to hit hard with balance, rhythm, accuracy, timing, speed. Okay, just nice and relaxed. He has to pop the punches. But when he hears the count, you ask any of my students, when they hear the count, what does it mean? It's already done. It's already finished. Of you don't hear the count, then move. You hear the count, and you've already finished the technique. Oops. That's your mindset. Oops. Okay? One, two. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, two. Five, two. Bump, 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 bump. You notice what I have to do? This right hand just stays here the whole time. The left hand just goes one, two, one, two. Again. One, two, three, two, five, two. See that? Rotates, two. This hand doesn't have to move. This is the, the what I think is the 
the brilliance of this style of Oz Midwest. Okay, and one, two, three, two, five, two, rotate off, two, good. We move around again, and again, one, two, three, two, five, two. Boom, and then I'll throw. If he doesn't, if he doesn't have his hands up, I'll throw the technique. So now he goes one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two. I'll come back, you with the swoop, then hit me with the nine. Again, one, two, three, two, hook, boom. And he'll come back with a tendon reflex off the two. Again. Okay, now what we can do is let's add a couple of kicks. Okay, so watch first. One, two, three, two. I punch, he slips, boom, he rotates off. And then there's the head kick or the thigh kick across the front of the body. Again, one, two, three, two. Oop, my bad hip. And boom. Okay, so he uses a tendon reflex this time, not for the punch, but for the, the kick. Oops. Okay. Again. One, two, three, three, hook, four, four. Okay. He can also do the, the body kick or the leg kick as well. One, two, three, two, hook, back, hook, and the leg kick across the front. If they're going really hard, it's a good idea to wear pads. But if you're young and training for tournaments, to get the pads. Awesome. You've got to condition your legs. Awesome. Okay. And again, one, two, three, two, bang, hook, rotate, bang, thigh kick. Okay, so I'll call, I'll position a pad for what I want him to do with the kick. If I present no pad, he goes leg kick. If I present the pad, he goes high kick. Okay, so watch. Nice, relax. One, two, three, two, hook, back. On my neck. Oh, sorry. I'll oh, sort it there. No. <laughs> Again, we're going to add, now we're going to add the five. So one, two, three, two, five, two, slips the head, form, rotates around, head kick. Okay. Some people do the mitts like this for the body shot. And I don't do it because many years ago I was uh, training with a good buddy of mine who went on to become the Australian heavyweight kickboxing champion. But I've gone one, two, three, two, nine. He stepped in and he cut his eyebrows. He brought his head oh. right in, gone crack, and he caught his eyebrow on my elbow. And he, he was a, he cut fairly easy anyway. So um, had to postpone the fight because he cut his eye really badly. So I never do that. I always do this. Oh. Okay? And that wraps me up as well, allows me to get strong. Okay? Because we do this and it misses. It's very hard to strengthen your body. This, you can strengthen your body quite well. Oh. Okay? One, two, three, two, five, two. One, two, three, two, five, two. Rotates off. Boom. Again. Bop, 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 bop. Boom. Okay, this time he slips. One, two, three, two, five, two. Whoop, bang, whoop. Come in with the nine. And now he'll slip and then come in with the nine. Up, 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 boom, whoop, boom, boom. Rotates off and throws the kick. Whoop. Again, very simple stuff. You don't, it doesn't have to be complicated. We're doing a one, a two, three, two, five, two. Everything's off the two. We haven't even done a four. You can come the other hand four if you like. You can drop it to a six, four, or an eight, or inside. But for now, what we're doing is we're just trying to work on rhythm. Okay. So again, one, two, three, two, five, two. Slip the right body shot, rotate off, and kick you. Okay. Watch, nice, relax. One, two, three, two, five, two. Whoop, bang. Boom. Hands it down. I'll drop it. Okay. Again. One, two, three, two, five, two. Two pieces of what you're doing, right? Boom. Yes. So you've got to keep conscious of that. You never stop in the dead zone. Boss. Okay, again. One, two, three, two, five, two. Back. Rotate. Stop. Oh, and then he has to keep his hand up. Okay, now here's another rule we have at the dojo. You have to know what you're doing on the way out. Boss. So on the way out, what do we do? Jab, jab. Double jab. Boss. It's a double jab. You move off. And as you get out of the range, you throw a double jab. You don't even intend to hit them. All you're doing is maintaining the distance. So if he slips, nine, rotates out, two, and I come all over, yes. I have to have something in my face to discourage me. So watch what Ben does now when he exits. He'll exit with the double jab. One, two, three, two, five, two, slip, boom, nine, rotate. 
kick, let's go to the kick, sorry. And then foot goes down as he exits out, he'll throw a double jab. He's not aiming to hit me. If he hits me, it's great. But all he's aiming to do is keeping me off my game. So again, one, two, three, two, five, two, hook, foot, boom. Rotates off, kick, and then as he moves out of the zone, he'll throw two jabs. Okay, what he'll do it now is shadow sparring. Two, three, two, five, two, slip, nine, rotate off. Kick, and then as he moves out of the range, he'll just throw the hand in their face. I used to use this in Kogashin tournaments too. The rule says you're not allowed to hit him in the face. doesn't mean you can't balk them in the face. Okay, so I used to do quite well just going like this, like that, and then follow it with a kick. Okay. One, two. One, two. One, two, three, two. And again. And again. So every now and then, if his hands are down, I might throw them in the end. One, two, three, two. Boom, boom, boom. Good. He'll rotate off. Nice. And then throw. So again, one, two, three, two. Boom, 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 boom. Under. Boom. Rotate off. Boom. Come back with a two. Again, one, two, gloves on now. So now he's warmed up. He can put his gloves on. The gloves allows him to work on that rhythm even more because he has a bigger striking surface. <coughs> Good on you, Rudd. You can steal whatever you want, mate. It's my pleasure. I'm serious. Guys, if there's anything that ever comes up in these that you enjoy, use it. That's the objective. Okay? Um, the only time in, in the past where people have used stuff that I haven't been happy is from the book where I've seen people just absolutely um, – I got betrayed once. I think it was betrayal. A friend of mine asked if he could quote my book in his syllabus. I said, yeah, sure. And he had a lawyer behind him and I'm sure the lawyer said yeah we'll do it this way and then his syllabus was complete and a friend of mine said I think you should check your syllabus I said no it's all right I said he could quote it I said no he said no I think you missed the point so I checked his syllabus and the syllabus was a book and it was 90 percent from my book literally 90 percent and he had a one little sentence with thanks to Xi'an Cameron Quinn for allowing and that to me had gone a little bit overboard you know so when I see people doing seminars and they're teaching stuff uh, that I know isn't theirs and they don't give credit. I try to give credit wherever I can. If you've ever done a seminar, I'll always be mentioning people's names, okay, because you don't do yourself a disservice by mentioning who taught you something. I think you have to honour your teachers and I think it's very important. If I get something from even from my own students, I'll say, well, this is Gary O'Neill's footwork. Um, Benny the Jet taught me this. Uh, this is a soul side principle. It does nothing Bad for, for me. I think I like to honour my teachers. Uh, what do we got? Dipankar, namaste, all the way from India. Good on your rod. Yeah, you can, you can, we do elbow stuff too. Um, oh, don't worry, Rod. I, look, I understand. Um, elbow stuff works as well. Okay, we'll see if we incorporate a bit of elbows. But I just want you to look at, so what, what Ben's doing here is, um, as he's doing these techniques, I'm constantly, I'm not really concerned whether he's hitting the bag, the mitts hard. What I'm trying to do is make sure he's hitting with relaxation and rhythm and he has to have his head movement. So there's ways you can move the heads all the time. You have to combine the head movement, what we call dominant head position. What's that? Well, that's having the head in alignment correctly all the time. So let's have a quick look at that. So the head movement is you can even do it like this. He throws a one and moves his head. Boom. Bang. Throws a two, moves his head. Boom. Bang. Constantly moving. One. Two. One, two. And boom. Boom. Moves the head. Okay? And he has to constantly keep that head moving because as I keep coming towards him, boom. Boom. He has to make it a difficult target for me. Okay? And if he's firing, if he's, if he's uh, fighting someone whose arms are just coming, he just come in. To the, the stand-up range now, the stand-up uh, grapple range, okay? Tie me up, everything like that. That's what boxers do. So for elbows, what we can do is one, and what he does is he uses that as a gauge, and then he has to be able to headbutt. So even without the elbow, he comes in with a headbutt. Boom. Now, if you can headbutt, you can elbow. Okay? <laughs> you can headbutt, you can elbow. If you can't headbutt, you can't elbow. You're missed. But if he headbutt range, boom, now he hits with an elbow, 
he can elbow it, okay? So now instead of one, two, three, what he can do is go one, two, elbow. Boom, see that? Always have the hand up for elbow because if you're in elbow range, so is he. So the worst thing you can do is throw an elbow like this, put the hand down because they just go bang. Okay, sometimes they don't even mean to. Like that, they, you know, doesn't take much. Okay, so one, two, elbow, one, boom. See, like that? Again, bump, bump, boom. And again, bump, bump, boom. Like that. Bump, bump, boom. Okay? You can go uh, cross elbow, too. So, boom, there, like that, yep. Like this. So, moving around now, pops the elbow straight in. Boom. Like that. And again, boom, boom. Ooh, that's it. So one, yes. One, two, three, elbow. One, two, three, and boom. See, like this. Move it around. Don't stop in the dead zone. One, two, three, boom. It moves out, moves out. Okay, so you can put elbows in, but I have to say it's a different different rhythm. For, for a punch, it's like up, up, for an elbow, it's up, up, and you have to awesome. set it up. Awesome. It takes a different rhythm altogether. Okay, so let's have a look. So that's a fundamental idea of ways we can use the mitts. Relaxed, 90 degrees, two hands into one, the right hand just adjusts according to what the left hand's doing. Okay? That's very zen, isn't it? Close. Never let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Okay. One, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, five, two, one, two, three, two, five, two. Watch my right hand. Watch my right hand. Just adjust. One, two, three, two. No, just go like that. Okay, again. Bump, 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 bump. Rotates off. Punch. Okay. One, two, three, two. Underneath. One, two, three, two. Whoops. Underneath. Back with the right cross. Okay. So here's another thing you can do. I go here. Circle round. Load the tendon reflex on the right. Again. Boom. There. See that? And then you can come back with a two and a three. Boom. 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 Like that. Again. Under. Boom. Boom. Or if I come this way, you lead with a three and then back with a two. Very simple. Keep it simple. Three, two. See that? Then you get out of the dead zone. Three, two, rotate around with a double jab. You see that? This is a very simple system. <clears throat> For the nine, you have to work the nine. So we can work the nine. He bobs straight off. And then for a nine, he wants to tell himself that his shoulder is coming to my elbow. Okay? That movement in itself becomes defensive. Of course, you can break all the rules later on. You come out here and hit long distance. But if I want to work it, oh. this position is far more defensive. Oh. So I'm here, I leave my own elbow, my liver, and then I can come around the corner for his own, uh, for the own liver shot. Oh. So again, one, two, three, two, underneath, four, rotates off, and two. Again, nice and relaxed. Bop, 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 bop. Good. Oh. <laughs> okay. And I'll often do that. He'll do the combo, one, two, three, two. I'll go under, two, come in the line, rotate off. Good, you see that? And then I drop his hands, and then I'll, boom, I'll start to play with the head. Awesome. Because you never take your eye off your opponent. Awesome. See, when we're talking mitts, yeah, that was good, good one. I'll go back. Awesome. Okay, you've got to try to expect the unexpected. Awesome. One, two, three, two, five, two. Boom, boom, under, boom, nine, rotate off, two, boom, double jab away if he wants. Okay, we'll stop the hand nits there because we're actually running out of time. That's crazy that time has gone so fast. And I just wanted to show you very briefly how we use the, uh, the kick pads, the Muay Thai pads. It's very important that you learn how to use them properly. Actually, I'll leave, my, leave these on. Another thing you should do too is you should have your pads. Awesome. I've had those pads for at least 10 years, I'd say, and no one is allowed to use them except me. Awesome. And uh, sometimes people say, oh, can I borrow your pads? I go, no. Nah. <laughs> they go, oh, awesome. oh you know, you, you know, no. You never lend your equipment to people. Awesome. If it's in that situation, well, then your dojo has equipment awesome. and your dojo has gloves and everyone should, when they join my club, they get a pair of gloves. When they join, okay. But when it comes to your own equipment, particularly mitts, don't let them do it. I once went and did a uh, Pedro Saez, his name was, professional boxing coach at the. Uh, uh, um, yeah, no, it was in New York. What was it, Jim? It was down in uh, Brooklyn, at uh, underneath the Brooklyn Bridge, Dumbo, down um, under Manhattan Bridge. 
uh, Gleason's Boxing Gym. Man, look it up. What a bit of history that was. But uh, oh, there's a number of professional boxing coaches there, and I had a I chose uh, Tyron Tonga recommended Pedro Saiz, fantastic boxing coach. And every boxing coach has their own speed ball, their own, you know, bigger bogger ball. That no one even leaves a ball hanging. They train and they put it up on the uh, on the on the board, and then when they're finished, they take it down. No one uses anyone's equipment. Okay, tie pads. You hold them like this, not like this. Don't hold the pads like that. It doesn't work like that. My hands can't fit anyway. But you make sure you hold them like that. And the, you, they act as a shock absorber. Boom. See this movement? They act as a shock absorber. So you start off gently. He's working on the tendon reflex. So he see this movement? Kabunk, kabunk. Remember we talked about stomp, turn. So he stomps and turns and throws the key. So one, just nice and relaxed. I catch it and shock absorb, just like this. So if he throws from there, you'll see how my arms shock absorb. One, shock absorb, like that. Again, one. Now we tend to call the kicks not, I mean, the, the direction of the kick the, the position of the pads will tell you which kick. So one, one, we call the number of kicks in one, two, right, left. Okay, I'll still do this. If he's in range, doesn't get out of range, I'll still pop in the head. Okay, one, two knees, and one. So that's a little drill we do sometimes. We go two, five, two. When he does the five knees, he'll reach out with one arm, never two. Why do you reach out with one instead of two? He reaches out with two, and I go, boom, oh, and headbutt him. Reaches out with one, I try to headbutt him, he just redirects my head. Okay? You always lead with one arm, not two. Okay, so he does two, five, two. Two roundhouse. One, two, he reaches out. And five knees, one, two, three, four, five, pushes me away, and one, two. Then you go to the other side. Two, reaches it out, four, one, two, three, four, five. He redirects me, one, two. He never lets me <coughs> regain my balance control. So if I go one, two, I reach out. Even if he starts to try and headbutt me, I redirect him. One, two, three, four, five. Now, when I want to redirect, I stop. I don't want to stop and let him go because it's all over for me. Okay, what I do is, as I finish the knees, I redirect him. And I keep redirecting him. Okay, and I, so now if he tries to come back in, I redirect that with my hand and then throw the kick. Okay? So, I think we'll wind up yeah, that's, that's it because we're getting low on time. And I want to get some feedback if you've got any questions. Um, I'll just take this equipment off. Okay. Come on in, Ben. So that was a good session where I just wanted to show you how we use the mitts for relaxation. Okay. Um. Right, you want to show the, the knee pad. You want me to do that again, or did you write that before? Um, I'm not too sure. But anyway, yeah, look, we did those knees. I like to hold the pads. Watch, Ben. You hold the pads in this way, okay, and then you double up. Sometimes I find that if someone holds with a single pad, often it's not enough, or often what will happen is it'll miss. You go like this. So what you do is you do double. Even though the target is here, like that, sometimes if you miss, it, it, it'll go a little higher, you'll still have a backup. Okay, now the other day when I did that session with uh, Wes and uh, Darren Stringer, we we're working this combination. At the end of the combination, we we're coming around, and I was going one, two, and I was leaving the arm there. One, two, three. And you bring the hand up underneath, and you leave the hand where it is, so the knee is hidden behind the hand, especially when you've got a gi on in a tournament. Here, they don't even see the knee coming up. Okay, so that's another good way you can practice the knees. 
Um, <clears throat> thanks, Rochelle. Yeah, I got you already. Yeah, good on you, Rod. Thanks. But that's another good way to throw, to throw knees. You need to get away from the Kyokushin rules, of course, because you can't grab. But uh, it's very important that you understand that grabbing is not in kata. For example, in pin and four, we're taught to grab, kick, etc. Not really practical in real life. One arm grabs are always better than two arms because two arms means your body has to be square. So if nothing else, he just head butts my chest. Boom! It pushes me backwards. Okay? Or he's just rushing in. I just whoa. Well, the, the two arm grab is useless. Okay? The one arm grab is different. So now when he rushes in, boom, I push him away. See that? I control him here. And you can turn that into a good boxing control as well. So you have it, I call it the swan swimming across the water. See that? He comes in, take the hands away, I collar tie here. My weight and pressure is in the chest with my elbow. If I take that elbow away, then I grab, he can do anything he wants. Get out, okay? But I drop the swan down. So now with my elbow on his chest, it, if, and see the pressure he has to create to get his head out Close. opens up other things. Close. So now he tries to pull his head out, boom. And that allows me to continue on with the single. Close. Okay, so always reach with one hand. Boom, bang, see that? Bang, bang, and he turns into me. Switch to the other side, bang, bang. Now if I want to go for the knee, I grab and pull in like that. Close. Okay, Close. so um, it's very important that you recognize you need to work the single arm pull-ins rather than the two arm, right? That's particularly for the, the knee. Of course. Okay. Uh, well, could you quickly run through the numbers on the strikes? Yeah, no worries, Daniel. We'll only take a couple of minutes to do that. So no, don't worry about it. Of course. So, Daniel, odd numbers are left hand. Even numbers are right hand. So one is left. One, two, left, right. One, two, three, left, right, hook. One, two, three, four. The four, a two is a straight right cross. A four is an overhand right. Boom. You don't even have to do that big, but I get Ben to do it that big. So as he does it, his head moves out of range. See that? So now if we're in here and I go here, he throws that right, bang. His head's out of range and mine isn't. Okay, so again, one is a straight left jab, two right cross, three hook, four overhand right. Okay, and an over, remember, a left jab can be like that, it can be like that, Close. it can be like that, Close. it can be like that, okay? The angle you're working, if you want to know how to throw different punches, watch Lomachenko, Close. okay? So an overhand right can be simply, that's a straight right, an overhand right can be simply that. Close. It can be simply that, okay? It can be that. It Close. can be a number of things, Close. all right? So one, one, two, one, two, three, two, okay, a four, uh, sorry, a four, Five left hand uppercut, six right hand uppercut, seven straight to the body with the left hand. He's such a razorback. Okay, right, eight is the right hand to the body. Nine is the liver shot. Ten is the kagi ski. Boom, body shot with the right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. There you go. They're the numbers for you, uh, Daniel. And uh, you play around with those. I suggest you concentrate on one, two, three, two, five, two, six, two, and the nine. Okay, let them go for, for starters. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Mike, that's very kind of you. Good on you, Torbjorn. Uh, Torbjorn's one of my buddies that I only got to meet in the last few years. He's, uh, he trains in uh, Norway, and I go up to Norway every November for seminars, and he's become a good buddy. So it's really nice to see you here, Torbjorn. Uh, Daniel, yep, play with that. Just play with a one, two, three, elbow high, body rotation, okay? You can even just do it like that to start with. Where he actually literally going, he holds his mitts up, he holds the hand up, and I'm literally doing this. Horizontal, rotate. Horizontal, I don't even move, look, my hand, if it was attached by a string to my body, see that? I'm holding my little finger. My thumb is on my chest. I rotate. It doesn't move in relation to my body. What moves it is my body rotation. Okay? 
Bang. There. Man holds his like that. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Why? Because I believe that when you hold it like that, you reduce the injury potential to your little fingers. I tend, personally, I tend to think this way has more power because I, tell, I pull it in a little bit differently. But that's, you know, if you knock them out, like Salsa says, there's only ever one right way to do a technique. But if the way you do it knocks them out, that's the right way. Okay. Uh, Dan, you know, always rod. Nice, simple system. Yep. This is straight into the Kyokushin New Genesis syllabus. I think you're right there, Rod. And it's one of the things that we'll be doing uh, videos on in the future. Bush, Damien. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Well, I agree with that. And my daughter is studying, uh, what does she call it, information design or um, design technology. Anyway, she designs, she went to uni and did um, uh, web page design and things like that, information technology. And she got a scholarship to go to Germany and study at a college over there. And one of the beautiful things, if you've ever heard of the Bauhaus design approach, Paul Kniel, you'll know about the Bauhaus but uh, the German design, people think that German design isn't up with a lot of other areas. It's stunning what they've done there. And she went over to Germany um, for a semester at university and uh, really it was fantastic for her. So um, simplicity indeed is very much a sophistication because it takes many years to be able to make something supremely sim uh, simple. Good on you, Damien. Thank you. Yes, Paul. Good. Uh, indeed, the Bauhaus is. She, my, my daughter spent a semester in uh, Mainz, just outside of Frankfurt. She had a wonderful time. There was a really good, uh, I think it's called the Mainz College of Technology. Very nice school. Okay. Uh, Rod, punching, then elbows and headbutts, and combine all three. Lots of ideas. Good on you, Rod. Yep. Remember, the headbutt elbow range is to a centimetre the same. If, if I can headbutt Ben with my head, I can elbow him. If I can't reach him with my head without moving, I can't reach him with my elbow. Okay, move into headbutt range, I'm in elbow range. Remember that. It's down almost to the millimetre. <clears throat> so if, if you know you can headbutt something, you can you can know you can elbow them. Oh. Good on you, Harry. Rod, yes, Bauhaus studied this during history of art. Yep. he did. I didn't know you did a diploma in graphic design, but I know Rod Wippenar is a civil engineer. Um, that's very cool. <laughs> Mike, that's the that's the that's the plagiarist dilemma. I know someone said it; it just wasn't me. So I even say in my book, "Look, as far as I can, I give credit to where I can." Please don't mistake me for being a plagiarist. I just can't find the source. You know, that's one of those things. Good on you. Thank you, Frederick, all the way from Sweden, Dunkevel, and thank you, everyone. Um, Dunkevel, I think, is Dutch. But anyway. Good on you guys. Look, thank you once again. I hope you enjoyed that. It's great to have uh, Ben along. He's my student since he's a little boy, but he's also a good buddy. So it's a real pleasure. Shout out to uh, the Dojo T-shirt. That's oh, our quintessential with two ends. See, who's that? That's me. We came up with that, no? Yeah. And uh, Aaron, Aaron McClellan, our good buddy, long-time student, has been training with me since he was a little boy. He's now in, uh, in Tokyo doing some great work there. Thank you very much. Good on you, Rob. Thanks for coming along. Uh, Rochelle, good to see you again. I really appreciate your consistency and your loyalty. Awesome. Uh, all my Patreon friends, thank you so much. Get along to Patreon if you can. I appreciate that very much. And uh, don't forget, if you haven't uh, subscribed, hit like, hit subscribe, uh, hit that little bell for notifications and share. The most awesome. important thing you can do is share. Awesome. I'd rather you share it five times and hit like five times, okay? Um, thank you very much to everybody. Mike, us, arigato le masta. Raj, namaste. Danne bat. No, what's thank you? I'm trying to remember what thank you is in uh, in Nepali. Um, shukriya. No, it's danne bat, I think, isn't it? Yeah, good on you. And Paul Kniev, good. Thank you very much again. Shah, good to see you, buddy. You are quiet during the session, but I didn't really look. Thanks, guys. Now all I have to do is remember the positions and work in real person. Well, we'll get to it when we get to the oh, camp, huh? Tuz and tuck. Yes, good. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Torbjorn. Tuz and tuck. Al, Raj, thank you. Good, Rod. Sivitri, good on you, man. Thank you. Raj, thank you. Namaste. Namaste to you, Aslin, uh, Damien. And uh, good on you, Harry, from down the hill. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, done there, but I thought it was. I had it right. Done there, but thanks, guys. Oh, see thank you, you. Uh, uh, Monday. Oh, thank you, Doug. Appreciate it. Oh.